Hello and welcome to a mini weekend championship predictions from the Orange Ball Podcast. I'm Craig Samuel. With me as always is Daniel Cody and Charlie Betts. Let's have a quick recap from midweek match day 25 where there's not many points in it. Two perfect scores, one for Charlie Betts on Watford versus Barnes, which ended 1 0. And myself with Norwich 2, Bristol City 0. Unfortunately, Daniel Cody didn't get any perfect scores. But overall, Charlie Betts wins match day 25 with six scores. Uh, six points, should I say, to my five, to Daniel Craig's four. So overall, I still lead at the top of the table with 170 points with 30 perfect scores now. Daniel Craig's in second place with 161 with 24 perfect scores. And Charlie's on 140 with 21 perfect scores. Let's move on to this weekend. It is FA Cup fourth round weekend, but there's still championship fixtures. We've got four of them and we start off with Friday night. It is Stoke City versus Watford at the Bet365 Britannia Stadium. Code Stoke somehow game of the week. I think one of you two said it, actually. It might have been you, Craig, actually, that says Stoke, they, they have so many crap games and then they're in a thriller. I just, I don't understand it. I, I would like to the credit, but I think it was Charlie. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> they, take the episode, though, it's fine. <laughs> they'd, uh, they'd scored two goals in five games before that in all competitions. And then they're in a free all thriller. I mean, in the last four league games prior to that, they'd conceded one or none in all of them. I just do not get it whatsoever. And it's made even harder in this game because, albeit Watford have got back-to-back wins, they're at home and now now on the road against Stoke. Watford's away record is the seventh worst in the championship, despite being right up there in the promotion race. Watford are unbeatable at home, but they're not at home. And as a result, I can't see them winning. But how can you see Stoke winning in the form they're in? I'm sure they'll turn up with something special now, but I cannot do anything other than play safe. And for me, it's nil-nil or one all. So I'm going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline to start. And, I mean, it could be it could be any score. But based on the facts, you'd go for a draw. one all for me. Charlie, new manager at Watford, he's had a solid start. Yeah, you say that. I mean, uh, they've had a bit of the rub of the green. Obviously, Tom Cleverley's goal against Huddersfield was not necessarily the attacking prowess that the manager was having to bring. But all joking aside, they do seem to have a bit more... Freedom. Obviously, Ben Foster's injured, for those of you who've been watching his YouTube channel, so he's uh, out for the next few weeks with a broken finger. So you do have to maybe put that into account. You know, they've got a young goalkeeper in, in there instead. Stoke, I would probably imagine, will rain down a few on him. So I don't know. I, I, I largely agree with Dan. I think it, it's so hard to split them. But I, in the interest of competition, I, I don't copy scores. So there's no way there's going to be four goals in this. No way Stoke followed a, a three all with a, a two all or something like that. So I'm contemplating nil-nil, but I just think there might be a sneak right at I mean, Stoke are in woeful form, so I'm against my better judgment. 1-0 Watford away from home, even though Watford have been terrible away as well. So when you, you think Stoke should be solid again against Rotherham, and, and then they go and concede three goals, they turn my back, Stoke, they don't do it. So I'm going to go for Watford, even though they're not been great away from home, as you guys have pointed out, but I think they'll do enough. And they're never spectacular, they never get like win 3 4 nil. they get the odd goal and the job done. So I think they're going to win this one 2-1. Let's move on to Saturday's game, the only one of the day in that championship. It is Queen's Park Rangers versus Derby County. Charlie, Queen's Park Rangers, two away wins in a row. Well, yeah, the thing is they're at home for this one, though, and that's what throws the whole thing out again. I was about to bring up the form table, and I thought, again, with these two teams, what's the point? Derby got a fantastic win at the weekend as well. Do you know what I mean? You can't, you can't sort of write away from that either. So... Oh, I don't know. But then there's this whole rigmarole of, you know, I'm not going into the story, but, you know, the potential having to, as well as not being able to pay players, they might have to pay a former player in Richard Keogh and there's the financial, you know, instability that comes with that. So off the pitch, Derby are a mess, but they seem to be all right um, on the pitch, but that was that was at home. So, oh, I, I really don't know where to go with this one. The thing is, QPR have put a little bit of a run together. I would argue on paper, they've probably got the slightly better squad. Oh, I don't know. Right, I tell you, I'm going to have to go for it. Like, same, same as last week, because he got me some points. 2-1 QPR. Codes, Derby County, despite what we said about Wayne Rooney in the first game in full charge, obviously had the last, but he bounced back quite well against a very strong formal side. Yeah, it was a good result, to be fair to him. And you've got to say, I mean, Charlie talked a little bit about some of the circus off the pitch. The management team, Steve McLaren, the football inside of the club, is doing a very good job in difficult circumstances. And they're clawing their way out of there gradually. QPR, I see Charlie's point, but... There were two victories on the road. And we saw in that Luton game how effective they can be on the road. When teams are playing a higher line at home, they've got the chance to counter them. They've got some fantastic wingers. As I say, Samuel, for me, is going to be like an Eze in a couple of years again. He's a quality player. But at home, teams sit deeper. Derby are the masters of defending at the moment under Wayne Rooney. They don't concede more than one, even when they're losing. 
So as a result, I think Derby are going to frustrate them and they're going to get one of the 1-0 wins on QPR. I don't think it's going to be a thriller. In fact, I've gone for two awful games to start, haven't I? So 1-0 to Derby and watch the FA Cup instead. <laughs> I'm going to have to go right down the middle because I don't know what QPR... I know QPR are shocking at home, but to be fair, the Derby, clean sheet against a strong former side and that will give them a real confidence boost up, even despite what's happening off the field. Keep your home. Obviously, if they can get on that winning run at home, they need to win a game at home. They haven't really done that since Cardiff, I believe, a three-two game. So I'm gonna go for straight down the middle. I'm gonna go for one-one. And let's move on to Sunday, the first game of the day. It is Preston North End versus Reading. Coach Preston North End. They were did have a good home form until they lost to Northern Forest. Do you think they can bounce back against a strong Reading side? Well, you're right. They they were improving at home. The one thing I would say is that they are still the most unpredictable team in the league, despite what we try to give to other teams. They lost their last home game against Forest. All right, they've played on a row three times in a row. They beat Birmingham at the weekend, but... Or midweek, sorry, they beat Birmingham. But they got outplayed in that game stats-wise. Birmingham had 55% possession, over double the amount of shots on goal. It's quite frustrating because you, you can never predict Preston and be assured of it. I mean, me and Charlie thought it would be a comfortable away win and we were proven wrong. You went for a draw and they smashed and grabbed it on the break. I just don't know. They've made good signings. They are improving at home. But Reading are in the top six on away form this season. And I have to back that because I thought they'd struggle coming back. And the, the players are coming back into form. They're getting back to fitness. They've had a little breast and they're now coming back into fire. So Reading are going to win for me. And it's just whether I go for a big one. Because Preston can collapse. No, 2-0. And we're back again on the same scoreline. Yeah, I, I think Reading will be too strong for Preston. Obviously, Lucas Jow is back on form. As he now back fit, now back playing, and now back scoring. And um, Reading, I think Reading were fantastic on Tuesday night against Coventry. Yeah, they completely battered them. A very good free kick as well by Swift. Preston, on the other hand, I'm not sure. I just I don't know Preston. They they, they could be good and then they could be horrific. Uh, there's never never been anything in the middle with Preston. So I, I think Reading will easily win this one 2 0. Charlie? Yeah, I, I think I have to. I mean, Reading's last five away from home, the only one they lost was at Brentford, albeit 3 1, but still prior to that, they've kept a, a fairly tight ship. And I know I'm not going about my leaky goals comment, but Preston, I mean, I think two shots against Birmingham, one of them went in. So, you know, you've got to love a good smash and grab like that. However, it doesn't bode well for trying to predict them to get a result. But there is just a little niggly part of me, like you say, Preston's so unpredictable that they can end up winning that 3 2 or something crazy like that. I'm not going to go for that. I think Redden will be too strong. And I think off of the momentum of, of the game, um, well, when we were recording two days ago, I think they'll win 3 0 again. I'm going to go for a repeat scoreline of the weekend. I just think, like you say, with Preston collapsed and they've done it a few times this season, they fold completely. So 3 0 Redden for me. Craig, as you've copied me, could you please change my score to 3 1? We are not <laughs> having the same score lines in a four game weekend. And the final game at the Riverside Stadium is Middlesbrough versus Blackburn Rovers. Charlie, are you glad this game's not at Ewood Park? <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I'm not I'm not here to, to do all talk sports sort of stuff. I was surprised the game was waterlogged. That's all I would say. In terms of the, the game, though, I don't know. Borough, like, they beat, obviously beat Forest away from home. Their away from record was appalling before that. But at home, they've been so, so strong that you'd have to be a fairly foolish person to, to, to not back them. However... However, Blackburn, as poor as they can be, can also be absolutely sublime as well. And there's always goals in it with Blackburn. So I don't think even Tim will keep a clean sheet. It's just for scoreline. I think the, the wily old fox that is Neil Warnock will try and keep it a bit tighter. So I think there'll only be three goals. I think I'm going to go two to Middlesbrough and one to Blackburn. Kate? I don't know. If you look at all of the stats, nothing adds up in this game. Middlesbrough have been very good at home, then lost 1-0 at home to Birmingham. They've conceded the least goals at home in the league or the joint least. And Blackburn have scored the second most on the road. It's just a stab in the dark, this one, isn't it? There is absolutely no idea. Blackburn are, are following on from Preston as the second most inconsistent team in the league. Middlesbrough at home risk becoming inconsistent. And only one of their last six games have been at home. So how do we judge that? I'm tempted to go for a big Blackburn win. But I think I might bottle it. <laughs> it's either a... I can't even go for a draw, can I? I don't know, Craig. But you can. You can I, really I can, go but it would be ridiculous. No, no. <laughs> I can't really go for a draw, but I'm going for nil-nil. I didn't have the same scoreline as Charlie, to be honest, when I wrote this down. But oh, you'll change it for him. That's nice. Nice to know. <laughs> it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a stretch on the points, to be fair. I'm not, I'm not afraid. 
Mills, the last home game was so bad, Millsborough. But then Blackburn, I just don't know about Blackburn. They could, as you say, they could score six and then they can lose the game one nil. It can, it can only go up two ways. You can either do one nil Millsborough, which will be a smashing grab, and Tony uh, Murray will get pissed off with it, or it'll be two one, where Millsborough will score in the last minute in Craig Savage time in the eight, past the 80th minute. I'm gonna, yeah, no, no, I'm gonna go two one. I'm gonna pick two one because I, to be fair, Blackburn's. Obviously, when you've got Bradley Dak and you've got Armstrong and you've got uh, Harvey Elliott on the wing, they're going to create chances, Blackburn. There's no two ways about it. They're going to create chances. And this Millsborough defence will crumble at some point. So they will concede one, but I think Millsborough are doing enough to score two. And that's how I'm going for it. I'm going to go for that. And let's have a quick recap of what we predicted for these four games. Me and Chai believe a Watford are going to be Stoke. We think it's going to be tight between QPR and Derby, but nothing spectacular. We think Reading are going to trounce Preston North End and a very cagey Millsborough win for me and Charlie. Curry's going for the nil-nil. And those are predictions for this weekend. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Let us know in the comment section down there. And while you're down there, give this video a like. Subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.